Jonathan Fanning here, and I want to share with you something known as the Stockdale Paradox, described in the book Good to Great by Jim Collins, about the Hanoi Hilton and Admiral Jim Stockdale, the highest-ranking U.S. official locked in that prison camp in Vietnam. And Stockdale was asked, why did you survive? Very, very few people survived that camp. Stockdale said, well, let me tell you, the optimists didn't make it as a leadership student and a, and a student of excellence, I had to stop. I had to pause and try to figure that one out. Why would the optimists not make it? Why? Why would the optimists not make it? Stockdale went on to say that the optimists would say, by Thanksgiving, we're going to be out of this place. Thanksgiving would come and Thanksgiving would go and they'd still be in the Hanoi Hilton. Then they'd hit reset and they'd get their hopes back up, say, by Hanukkah, by Christmas, by New Year's, we will be home with our families, celebrating with our families, enjoying the holidays. And those days and those holidays would come and go, and they'd still be in the Hanoi Hilton. The optimists would once again hit reset, say, by spring, by summer, by 4th of July. By the time our kids are home for the summer, we'll be planning vacations as a family and spending time over the summer barbecuing with our loved ones getting their hopes up. Those days, those seasons would come and go, and they'd still be in the Hanoi Hilton. So the optimists would hit reset again and again and again, but slowly the hope was drained from them, and they died with a broken heart in the Hanoi Hilton. They died, so many of them died without hope. So then who makes it? Who makes it? Well, this was Stockdale's reply. It was people who were able to hold on to a paradox, one, a vision, a hope of a future, be home with my family. I'll contribute to the world in this way when I get out of here. You know, this future, this hope. But at the same time, confront the brutal reality that we're here. We'll be here today. We're probably going to be here tomorrow. We may be here next week, next month, next year. We may be here for decades. So they were able to hold on to both ends of that spectrum simultaneously. Hmm. Interesting. Let me bring that to you in the real world. Had the chance to spend a lot of time with Ford Motor Company, helping them to copy Toyota, helping them to try to turn this huge, huge vessel around of Ford Motor Company. And in that journey, I got to visit most of the final assembly plants in North America and a lot of the, the sub-assembly plants. But one of those facilities was run by a plant manager who was also brought from the Toyota school. He was actually a plant manager for Toyota in Kentucky. One day, I'm visiting his facility. He pulls me aside. He says, Jonathan, I really, I really need your help with this. He says, over a month ago, my, plant, my management team and I agreed that we were going to copy a Toyota best practice. We're seeing these same handful of defects over and over and over again in this Windstar, this minivan, this Ford minivan. And he says, each time defect one occurs, we end up having to fix that somewhere in the facility. But they're happening every single day. So we decided as a team, if that defect happened more than 15 times, we would stop the line. And stopping a line in a final automotive assembly plant is talking about less than once a minute, once every about 52, 55 seconds, a vehicle comes off that line. So let's say every minute, 25 to $30,000 of production is sacrifice is lost. Twenty-five to $30,000. So there's a pain associated with that, right? There could be a pain associated with facing reality. He said, we will stop the line when we get more than 15 defects. That will elevate that defect as a major problem, force us to get to the root cause of that problem. He says, okay, we agreed to that over a month ago. He says, last, the last couple days, I said, my line's not stopping much. Let me walk the floor, see what we're doing. He starts walking the floor. And he walks into a warehouse that's on the other side of the QAW, on the north side, heading towards Toronto. Very rarely used warehouse, and it's quiet, and it's very, very dimly lit. And he looks around, and he sees that they've been hiding. His leadership team has been hiding minivans in this warehouse for the last few days. Over 400 minivans are hidden in this warehouse. How do you chase a vision if you do not accept what's really going on, if you won't confront what's really going on? As a leader, as a parent, as a spouse, as a community member, 
as a person in business, how do you chase a vision if you're not willing to face the reality of today? How do you do it? Are you doing it somewhere? I know I am. I know I've done it. I've been guilty. My question is not are you. My question is where. Where are the 400 minivans hiding? In your life, in your family, in your business, in your community work. Where are they hiding? What's the reality that you've been putting in the quiet, dimly lit warehouse? And what's it costing you? Yeah, $25,000, $30,000 as a leader. Would you stop the line? Would you? For that cost? It's going to take 10 minutes to try to find a cause. Oh, no. There goes a quarter million dollars. It'd probably take more than 10 minutes, wouldn't it? So there's a cost on both ends. Let me bring you this from the other angle. In our Leadership Rockland experience, we built bicycles and a great, great leadership exercise. Socrates wisely quipped that you can understand more about a person from an hour of play than you can from a lifetime of conversation. And watching games, watching people compete in games is a great way to learn about them. Um, from, a, from the side, use that in your interview process. But I watched these teams building bicycles and that vision, that hope, that why, that Viktor Frankl wrote it over and over again in Man's Search for Meaning. He who has a why can bear with almost any how. He who has a why, a big enough vision, can bear with almost any how. Brutal reality, right? I watched teams compete, and I didn't give them the why. I didn't say, you know what, at the end of this exercise, we're donating these, these bicycles to children that don't have bikes. And can you just imagine the faces of the kids and the parents teaching their kids how to ride a bike when the parents maybe thought, you know what, my kid's never going to have a bike. You know, we're just, we're, just thanking, we're just thankful if we can put food on their table. My kid will never have a bike. They'll always be going to the park and watching the other kids ride their scooters, ride their bikes. My kid will never have one. Can you imagine the faces of those children and the faces of those parents? What if, as a leader, as a participant in that exercise, you knew that, you knew that vision? What if you put that vision in front of your team? What would have been different? Everything wouldn't it have been, you know? Oh, it's hard to do this reality. We face reality over and over again. It's hard to do. We don't have the right team. We don't have the right tools. We don't have the right whatever. We did all right with the facing reality, but we missed the why. We missed the why. And I did that on purpose, but in the team, you as a leader, you could, you could put the why out there. You could say, you know what? We're going to make sure this happens. We're going to get these bikes to someone that could really use them. Then all of a sudden that team has the hunger and the reality doesn't change. But the pursuit as a team, as a leader, changes completely, doesn't it? Your world, your world, as a leader of your own life, what can you do on a daily basis to keep the vision you have for your life in front of you? Hmm. In your family, how can you keep the vision you have for your family in front of you and in front of your family on a daily basis? In your business, how can you keep the vision that you have for your business, your team, your company in front of you and in front of your team on a daily basis? How can you do it? Hmm. It doesn't give you license to ignore the reality, does it? No, as the Stockdale Paradox says, hold on to both at the same time. So every now and then, as a leader, you have to press time out and say, you know what, let me check reality. Let me confront the realities. You know what, as a parent, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a spouse, as a community member, as a neighbor, I'm dropping the ball in a couple areas. I'm hiding 400 wind stars here and here. I'm going to stop that. I have to stop that. What can you do as a leader with this concept? I hope that this has served you. It's my pleasure. Thanks. Have a great day.